Hello everyone, welcome to Techsify. Today's video is all about how you will migrate data from SQL Server to Postgres using Trino. Uh, Trino is an open source tool for data lakes. So let me just first introduce you with the tool. So what I'm doing is like I'm running the tool on a Docker and exposing it on port 9000. And I'm using one tool called as DBWare. It's a free tool. Uh, it's similar to SSMS. It allows you to connect multiple data sources, like MySQL and other thing in one place. And this connection is connecting to my 9000 port, as you can see, which has been exposed on the Docker uh, Docker container. So now what this tool allows is like with Trino, you can connect Postgres and SQL Server, MySQL, other databases all together. And you can query data in between these two in all the different databases. Means you can join a table between Postgres with SQL Server, or you can move data from Postgres to SQL Server, SQL Server to Postgres. But there is a catch. Uh, the connector doesn't allow updates as of now for SQL Server. Uh, it allows only inserts. So uh, if you want to use updates, so better first get your all data uh, bulk migration done using this tool. And then you can use Python or SSIS to migrate the data part of it. And again, you can use the same tool for getting the data. So that's up to you. Uh, one more thing is I am not recording this video to show you how to set up Trino. Uh, for that, you can take our consultation. We, we can help you with the, you can say setting up Trino on your server, or you can use Google. Uh, it's a simple tool. I think you can figure it out, or you can use EMR on uh, AWS. EMR allows you to directly create a cluster of Trino with multiple worker nodes. Uh, with the worker node, what I mean is in Trino, uh, you, it's like a master slave. You can have more workers if you have more data to move in, uh, if you have less terabyte of data. So better to start big machines uh, and you can start multiple workers. More worker are uh, similar to slave nodes, uh, which will be, uh, you can say, uh, maintained by coordinator, which will distribute the task between multiple, uh, you can say, workers. Uh, and also it helps you to run parallel queries. When you have one worker, the chances are you can run a couple of or three, four queries all together. But if you have like 10 workers, you can run N number of queries. So it totally depends upon you. You can scale up and down as per your requirement. So let me just show you how you, you will do the migration. So this video is a continuation part of the previous tools, which I have created the scripts and tools, which will help you to do migration. But this is more accurate version because with the my old version scripts and tools, what I found is like when it comes to Latin characters and other things, sometimes it becomes challenging and uh, moving data from one source to other source. Do you know, do it very well. You will not lose any data. So everything will get migrated very easily. So let's take an example. So these are the scripts. Uh, for these scripts, you can put your email ID or contact information in comment section, or you can reach us on my email ID, which is this. And I can provide you consultation along with that. So you have to run these scripts in your source database, that is SQL Server. Uh, in the same sequence, what the sequence of these files are, like 1.1 first and 1.2 later on and 1.3. These will set up some functions and other things which will help, uh, you can say, you to set up initial, uh, you can say, uh, set of queries, uh, which is used for migration. Uh, or you can do it by yourself also. It's uh, up to you. This is not, uh, you can say, mandatory step. But it will be helpful if you want to use my scripts. So once you run all these scripts after that, uh, there is a script called uh, SQL Server to Postgres. Now, once you run the script, you will see output like this. This output is nothing but it is giving you queries. Now, as I told you, I'm using tool, which is dbweaver. It's similar to SSMS, but if you don't want to use a tool, you can use Python script or C sharp or any programming language to read the output of this query and run these commands one by one. So let me just show you. So what is the output? So if I click on this customer, so it gives me this query. So I can just have to copy this query in my dbweaver. Again, you can use Python or other thing. From dbweaver, I can query my Trino. So it is connecting to Trino and it is reading data from my customer table. So local SQL is, is being name given to my local host for SQL server. So if I run this query, I'm able to get the output. So I can use a command called CTAS, which is called create table as. Now in here, if you see, see the schema is Postgres. Now Postgres is my local schema. So in my local schema, I've created a database called Northwind. If I refresh, there is no table right now. It's an empty. So once I run this complete command, 
what it will do is it will select the data from SQL Server, create a table in Postgres, and then it will insert the data. So if I run this query, it will take a couple of seconds to complete. Now here it has shown like 91 record has been updated. If I go to my Postgres, refresh my tables, I can see customer coming up. I can view the data as well. So it has migrated data and we can see the data in the SQL server and it will take care of all the Latin character or whatever the encoding we are using. Sometimes it breaks uh, for certain encoding. And if it if Trino is breaking, believe it or not, any other tool you use, those encoding need to be handled with a specific cases. Now let's take an example of one more table. Let me just close this file. I don't require this now. I For this, uh, you can say, Sample uh, for this uh, video, I'm just cover, uh, covering a couple of tables, not all the tables. So now I'm moving the pro uh, product table. One more thing you need to remember, it is not migrating the constraints. So you have to, you can say, create your constraint after the migration is done. First you migrate the data and then you create the constraints. Uh, again, I can query the table from my SQL server first, and it will show me the data. It will take a couple of seconds to show and then i can use ctas command again similar way it will move the data as i told you updates are not supported okay my second let me just remove the extra space select the query and run it again so now here you can see it has migrated 77 records i can go to my postgres refresh my tables and i will see my product table i can again view the data And my data has been migrated. Uh, can we give us a second? Yeah. So here you can see 77 number of product has been migrated. This is a very simple tool. Uh, for any setup or any uh, help, you can contact me on my email ID, or you can just put your email ID in the comment section. We'll reach you out. We provide consultation. Uh, so it totally depends uh, how you want to do it. Uh, secondly, let's say you want to, once the whole bulk migration has been done, now you want to only move the data and other thing. For that, you can use SSIS. I haven't checked whether the, there is a connectivity between SSIS and Prino, but if there is, I will be uh, sharing that video as well in the future. But let's say you know Python, uh, you can automate using a tool called Airflow. In Airflow, I have created this tag. This is not for this particular migration. This is for some other migration where I'm migrating these set of tables first and then the second set, then the third set, so on. So you can write your own workflow in, you can say Airflow, it's a workflow tool. And it's a pretty good tool. You can go and check the logs and everything. It's a kind of simple tool. Again, it's an also open source tool. It doesn't cost you anything, but you have to, uh, you can say write your own migration script or you can reach us for that. I hope this video was helpful to you. This tool is very good. It migrates the data with more accuracy. Uh, my previous version of tools sometimes have problem with the encodings. So this pretty much handles everything uh, without any issue. You can add your own naming convention. I have tried uh, doing it snake casing. I think it's not working, but uh, when you will ask for the scripts, I will update my script accordingly and it will generate you snake casing means category ID will get converted to category underscore ID and so on. Um, so hope this video was helpful to you. If you have any questions, kindly let me know. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye-bye.